Windows new features are explored in this tutorial. Let's now highlight and modify this clip. We've opened PIP Designer. Let's enlarge this particular image here. Move it slightly. Rotate it. Let's play that object through. Yeah, OK, we see the movement. Let's do something different with it. Click Stop here. Go to Enable Flip Object. We've just flipped it upside down. Did anybody notice the difference? Let's play through it. Yep, there's a bit of difference. Click Stop and let's change it again. We've reversed it on the horizontal. So instead of moving to the left, we're moving to the right. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? From an earlier tutorial, you should be quite familiar with motion paths and how it moves across the screen. Let's just play it so you can see it move. Yep, it moves across. All very easy. You notice that there are no keyframes marked here. Let's put some in, and here it gets a bit different. Let's move the slider along. And let's select to put in a keyframe that is a duplicate of a previous keyframe key or the next keyframe. Let's make a duplicate of the next keyframe and see what difference that makes. So the duplicate now has become the end keyframe position. And the end is here. Look what happens. Move the slider along, hits that keyframe, and it's already at the end of the motion path. And it holds that position. Combining the slider and keyframes gives a measurable time allocation for an editor. Brilliant. Right, let's add some uh, grid lines. Add the grid. I like to have the maximum number. Add the TV safe zone. Make the amendments you need to for positional. Remove the keyframe when you want to adjust the end of the motion path. It's quite important because it's quite fiddly otherwise. Then return and put the key marker back in. Smooth the slider through. We change it to a 30 degree angle, job's done. All we need to do now is click OK to finish. Right, we've brought another image in to our uh, dark background. Let's go to the Add Edit Pip Mask section, effect section. A quick scroll through all the masks and then select one. Put a mask on there. It's got a 75% transparency. We can change it if we wish by moving the slider, less transparent. And it's these panels that are less transparent and the ones on the edges. So we go back to 75% transparency, which is near darkness or almost, or to 100%. We can then also position where we want that mask to be. We can shrink it down in size, so we can localize the mask itself. Very useful, don't you think? I do. Add to that, we can maintain the aspect ratio of the mask or not. So in other words, if we don't, what happens then? We can localize it even more. Let's click the tab here. We can add a fade in and fade out, and we can control when the fade takes place. We can change the angle of the mask. Notice this change in the whole of the mask, not just the particular area we are working in. To remove the mask, all you have to do is click this X to remove. And it's all back to where it was in the beginning. To return it back again, kick 
click the un click the undo button. Pip Designer has the tools. All that's needed is you to have a go.